Hello guys, I'm Real Academy here and welcome back to the fifth part of my portal gun tutorial series. In my previous video, I told you how to set up teleportation so that when the player or some static mesh comes close to the portals, they get teleported to the other portal. In today's video, I will be telling you how to set the rotation so that the player, when teleported, faces forward. So for example, right now, when I create a portal and teleport, Instead of looking at the negative x-axis, the player continues to look at the negative y-axis. In today's video, I'll tell you how to fix that. So before I start, I need to give a quick overview of what we're going to do and why we're going to do it. Basically, there are four different ways the portals can be placed. One way is portal 1 is placed on the same axis as portal 2. Let me just hit play and show you. Portal 1 and portal 2 are on the same axis and when the player teleports, the player must be rotated Let's see how many degrees, 180 degrees to face forward. Now, if the two portals are on the opposite axis, so for example, portal one is on the negative X axis and portal two is on the positive X axis, then we do not have to change the rotation because the player is already facing the axis that he would face when he will get teleported. Another way the player can place the portal is perpendicular to the portal one which will be the portal is on the negative x-axis and the portal 2 might be on the y-axis or the negative y-axis. So in this case, when the player gets teleported, he must be rotated enough to face the neg uh, positive y-axis, which will be approximately negative 90 degrees. So we have to subtract 90 degrees from the player's rotation to make the player look forward when he gets teleported. So open up your portal 1 blueprint Open up your set player rotation function that we created in the first video. Get the variable cast to first person character and get portal to rotation. Now keep in mind there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to solve this problem using portal rotations. You can also solve it using vectors, but that's up to you. After getting the portal to rotation, store it on in the local variable portal to rotation. Now get the default scene root and get, get its world rotation and store it in the local variable portal1 rotation. Set portal1 rotation as the return value of get world rotation of the default scene root. We're also going to get the player's rotation and store it in the variable player rotation. So set player rotation, get player controller, and from the player controller, just get, get actor rotation, plug in the return value into the player rotation of the set node. Now, now copy this get player controller, paste it here, and we're just going to make the player controller variable equal to the return value of the get player controller. We do this so that we do not have to use this node everywhere in our code. And we can just use this variable player controller to set the rotation or call the necessary functions. Do a broad check. Check if portal one rotation and portal two rotation get these two rotations and check if portal one equals equal to portal two. So if portal one rotation is equal to portal two rotation, that would mean they are on the same axis because if their rotation is the same, their axis must be the same as well. Now, when the player teleports, his rotation should be plus 180 degrees so that he faces the forward axis of the portal. So if this condition is true, we're just going to get the player controller variable and set control rotation plug in the true pin of the branch into the execution of the set control rotation and the new rotation will be split struct pin and get player rotation get player rotation split struct pin plug in the x into x y into y and we're going to add a float and set the value accordingly so basically what this does is it adds 180 degrees to the player's z rotation so that the player is rotated 180 degrees and then he gets teleported. If I play, you'll see this in action. I'm facing this negative Y, and if when I come out, I'll also be facing this negative Y. It creates the seamless effect when getting teleported. Now we're going to do, do the same. Let's first comment our node. Now, if it's not true, then let's move on to what the player rotation should be set to if the portals are opposite to each other. Since the player's forward axis does not change when the portals are placed opposite to each other, therefore we do not need to do anything when this happens. So copy this code, paste it here, 
compile, make this comic node a bit bigger. And now let's see, if I hit play, this is the second portal, this is the first portal. Eject, and now let's see what the rotation of the two portals are. This portal has a rotation of positive 90 degrees, while this portal has a rotation of negative 90 degrees. So what we can do is do a branch check if the rotation of portal 1 multiplied by negative 1 is equal to the rotation of portal 2, which is 90 degrees, then we will not change the player's rotation. And as for what to do when the portal is placed on the negative x-axis and the positive x-axis, the portal 1 rotation is 0, 0, 0, and portal 2 rotation is 0, 0, 180. So these two are the values that we have to consider when trying to get this condition to be true. Move this node a bit down, and for portal 1 rotation, search for multiply scale rotator integer, multiply it by negative 1 and plug it into the A and get these two variables again, portal 1 rotation and portal 2 rotation. If the portal 1 rotation is equal equal to 0, 0, 0, meaning that it is on the negative x-axis and the portal 2 equal equal 0, 0, 1, 8, 0, search for and boolean. Now if now basically what it's checking is if the portal 1 rotation is 0, 0, 0, meaning that it's on the, it has spawned on the negative x-axis and the portal 2 rotation is 0, 0, 180, meaning that it has spawned on the positive x-axis, then these two will be opposite to each other. So this AND value will return true. Copy this and paste it here. And this time reverse the roles. Portal 1 rotation is equal to 0, 0, 180 and portal 2 is equal to 0, 0, 0. What this basically means is when the portal 1 is located on the positive x-axis while the portal 2 is located on the negative x-axis. And now connect this to a OR boolean, click on the add pin button, plug in the branches. Now if any of this statement is true, we're going to execute this branch statement. If it's true, we are simply going to execute this branch. Plug in the false into this branch. And of course, if it's false, let me just copy and paste it below here. If it's false, then it means that the portal 1 and portal 2 are not spawned on the same axis and they are not spawned on opposite axis. So therefore, they must have been spawned on perpendicular axis. So before we move on, just if portal 1 is opposite of portal 2, you're going to want to delete this node here and directly plug in the player rotation into the new rotation. Compile. Now, as you can see, the player went right through the portal and he, he was facing forward. Now, let's set up the player's rotation if the portal 2 is perpendicular to portal 1. Basically, delete portal 2 rotation. Now, we're going to check on which axis the portal 1 has spawned. So, if its rotation is equal to 0, 0, 0, it will mean that the portal has portal 1 has spawned on the negative x-axis, since the rotation at negative x-axis is 0, 0, 0, meaning that the portal 2 is either the positive y-axis or the negative y-axis. So its rotation is either 90 or negative 90. So what we're going to do is do another branch check, branch, and this time the condition will be to get the portal 2 rotation equal equal. Now if the portal 2 rotation is equal to 90 degrees, branch, connect it to the branch statement, move it forward, if it's equal to 90 degrees, it will mean that the portal 2 has been spawned on the negative y-axis. So when the player gets so when the player gets transported or teleported, the player's rotation should be facing the y-axis. To do that, we're going to eject and check the rotation. As you can see, we have to subtract 90 degrees in order to face the y-axis. So we're just going to minus 90 if this statement is true. Now if it's false, we're copying this code, pasting it here. Now if it's false, then Instead of subtracting 90 degrees, we're going to add 90 degrees because the pl player's rotation when the portal has been spawned on the y-axis should be plus 90 in order to face the negative y-axis. So we're going to add 90 and then set the rotation. Now let's see if this works. Save all. Let me delete these portals. If it play. Now I should get out looking at this box. And I just did. As for this, I should get out looking at this box. And I did. Now we're going to need to do this for the negative y, the positive y, and the positive x-axis as well. Now at positive x-axis, the portal's ro portal 1's rotation is 180 degrees. So what we're going to do is, if portal 1 rotation equals 0, 0, 180, if it's true, and portal 2 rotation is equal to 90, meaning that 
the portal 2 is either located at the negative y-axis or the positive y-axis, then we are going to set the rotation accordingly. So in case the player is looking at x-axis and the portal has been made at the negative y-axis, to make the player look at the positive y-axis, we're going to rotate him positive 90 degrees. So the portal ro look, rotation is 90 degrees, we have to add 90 to our player's rotation. So if this is true, we're going to add 90 degrees, and if it is false, we're going to subtract 90 degrees. Compile. Now connect this branch with this false statement here. Compile. And let's test it out. Play. I should get out looking at this ball here. As you can see, I got out looking at that ball. And now I should get out looking at that box. And I got out looking at that box. So that's the positive x axis done. Now let's move on to the negative y axis. Copy this whole code, paste it here. So portal 1 rotation to be on the y-axis should be negative 90 degrees. So if portal 1 has spawned at, at y-axis and its rotation is equal to negative 90 degrees, if it's true, let's see what we're going to do. Play. So the portal 2 can either be placed at negative x-axis or po positive x-axis. In order to face those directions upon teleportation, if the portal 2 rotation is equal to 0, 0, 0, then we're going to have to rotate the player negative 90 degrees to face forward. If the rotation is 0, 0, if it's true, we're going to rotate the player negative 90 degrees. And if it's false, meaning that the portal 2 would, would have been spawned at positive x-axis, then we're just going to add 90 degrees instead of subtract. Compile. And now connect this false into the branch execution pin. Compile. And now if I play, I should teleport looking at that box. And I did teleport looking at that box. And when portal 2 has been placed on the positive x-axis, I should get teleported looking at that box, and I did. So the y-axis is also done. Copy this code, paste it here, connect the false of the branch into the execution pin of the branch. Now the rotation that is left is the negative y-axis. Compile. Since the portal 1 rotation at negative y-axis is 90 degrees, therefore we're going to set the rotation of portal 1 to be 90 degrees here. And as for, as for portal 2 rotation, it's either going to be 0, 0, 0, or it's going to be 0, 0, 180. If I play, let's see what the rotation should be if the portal 2 rotation is 0, 0, 0. So the player should be facing the x-axis upon teleportation. So we are going to add 90 degrees. Stop. If, player rotation, if portal 1 rotation equals 0, 0, 90, meaning it has spawned on the negative y-axis, and portal 2 rotation is equal to 0, 0, 0, meaning it has spawned on the negative x-axis, then if it's true, then we're going to add 90 degrees to the player's rotation. And if it's false, we're going to subtract 90 degrees from the player's rotation and then set the rotation accordingly. If I play now, wait, let me just delete these extra portals. And now if I hit play, you can see I got spawned, I got teleported, looking at the right position. Now we also need to do the same for the Z axis, if portal 1 has been spawned at this axis Z. But for this, instead of adding to the player's rotation, we're just going to set the player's rotation to the rotation of portal 2. So if portal 1 rotation is equal to 0, 90, and 0, 0, 90, and 0 on the Z, plug in the false to into the execution pin of the branch, delete, delete this, delete this, and delete this, move this down. If this is true, instead of adding or subtracting from the player's rotation, we're just going to disconnect this Z player Z rotation, split structure pin of portal 2 rotation and plug in the portal 2 rotation directly into the new rotation of the player. Compile, save all, save selected, delete this portal, test if it works. Now I should get rotated according to the rotation of the portal 2. The reason why I am not adding or subtracting player's rotation and then setting the rotation accordingly is because the player can enter from any side and the rotation will be messed up. So for example, right now we should add 180 degrees to the player's rotation and then set the player's rotation. But if I decide to go into this portal from here, the player's rotation should not be changed because I'm looking at the forward axis of this portal 2, which is the Y, and I should not be rotated. My rotation should not change. So this is why I'm just simply setting the player's rotation 
according to the Portal 2 rotation. It has its drawbacks, but it's much easier to work with and much more simpler. You can customize it if you want. Well, and now I'm just going to clean up this code a bit. One thing that you need to ensure is that you increase the error tolerance to be 1. So do that for every instance and hit compile. That's it for Portal 1. Now we need to do the same for Portal 2. Just copy all of this code, open the Portal 2 blueprint, and open the set player, uh, set player rotation function, and paste all of the code here. Now we're going to change some things, such as instead of getting Portal 2 rotation, we're going to get Portal 1 rotation, and store the value in the Portal 1 rotation variable, and instead of storing the world location of the default scene root into portal 1 rotation, we're going to store it in the variable portal 2 rotation. This part is fine. This is also fine. This is also fine. And now we're going to make some changes here. Instead of portal 1 rotation, we're going to get portal 2 rotation. And instead of portal 2 rotation, we're going to get portal 1 rotation. Swap these out for every instance. And hit compile. Let's test it out. I should come out facing the negative y. I should come out facing the positive x. I should come out facing the y. And I should come out facing negative y. Now I should come out facing the negative x. So yeah, it works. Now go to the event graph of portal 2. In my previous video, I told you to call these two functions in the overlap event of the box collision. Instead of calling set player velocity before set player rotation, we're going to call set player rotation before set player velocity. Do the same for portal one. Go to the event graph. Instead of calling set player velocity function before set player rotation, we're going to call the set player rotation to set the player rotation. And, and then we're going to call set player velocity function to set the player velocity. Compile. And that's it. In today's video, we were basically able to achieve setting the player's rotation according to the forward axis. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to be telling you how to fix this velocity issue that you're facing currently. Right now, my forward velocity is in the negative y axis, and my player retains the velocity in the negative y direction, which is why when I te get teleported, I start to move sideways in the negative y axis, like this. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you how to fix this issue by, by transferring the negative y velocity into the negative x velocity or the forward vector of the portal 2. I hope you guys liked my video and if you did please do like share and subscribe for more and i'd like to really thank you guys for your support and see you guys in my next video bye